What exactly are intraocular lenses, and when are they needed? In this episode of OcuTalk, Dr. Jennifer Lowe will be educating us on IOLs, what they're made of, new advances in technology, and what you need to know both pre- and post-surgery. Dr. Lowe? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us from Lowe Ophthalmology in Miami, Florida, Dr. Jennifer Lowe. Dr. Lowe, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, thank you very much for having me. It's an honor. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here, and thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to visit with us. Uh, Dr. Lowe, before we get started in our conversation today, I was hoping that maybe you can uh, introduce yourself to us, uh, tell our audience a little bit about your background and your specialty. Great. Thank you very much. Well, um, as you know, I am an ophthalmologist practicing in Miami, Florida. I focus mainly on cataract surgery and also refractive surgery. And I opened my own practice about five years ago. I was practicing previously in the South Florida area, uh, but then decided to hang my own shingle in Miami proper. Uh, prior to that, I actually grew up several different areas in the country, but more recently, I I did college and medical school and residency all in Indiana. So I'm a true Midwesterner at heart. Well, perfect. Thank you for that introduction, Dr. Lowe. And again, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Dr. Lowe, for our discussion today, we were hoping that maybe you can talk a little bit with us about intraocular lenses. What exactly are intraocular lenses? Great question. Well, intraocular lenses are the device or lens that's placed in a person's eye after they've had cataract surgery. So basically, when we take out a person's cataract, we're actually taking out their natural lens. And as many of you know, the lens is what focuses light into a person's eye, much like the lens of a camera. So when we remove a person's lens, we have to replace it with an artificial lens. Otherwise, the person would have no focusing ability. So basically, an intraocular lens is a man-made, implant that is simulating a lens. Well, perfect. Thank you for uh, letting us know what intraocular lenses are, Dr. Lowe. And uh, so why would someone need intraocular lenses? Well, that's a great question. So typically, you know, you need an intraocular lens when you've had cataract surgery, but some people will still have surgery to take out their natural lens even before they develop a cataract. So it's still actually the same surgery, but maybe they're younger and they haven't developed a cataract, but they're unhappy with their eyesight. Uh, so many of us already know about, you know, the phrase LASIK. LASIK is different because LASIK is changing the shape of your cornea. Some patients are not eligible for LASIK for whatever reason. It could be their prescription's too strong or they have other corneal diseases that doesn't allow for them to have laser vision eye correction. So another option is to actually go in, remove the person's native lens, which again is the focusing power of the eye and replacing it with a different uh, focusing power to actually fine tune or customize their prescription and maybe even remove the need for glasses. So anyone who's having any kind of lens-based surgery is going to need an intraocular lens. Well, perfect. Thank you for that information, Dr. Lowe. And uh, so what are the different lens options available for uh, patients who are getting intraocular lenses? Great question too. Um, so there's many available now, actually. We've come so far from the days when intraocular lenses were, were invented. Uh, and, and now not only can you have a, what we call a monofocal lens, or some people may refer to it as, a, it as a standard or basic lens, that lens gives a general focusing power to the eye, usually at one distance. Uh, so if someone's lucky and they don't have another eye condition called astigmatism with a standard monofocal lens, they will usually get good vision for far away. However, they still need glasses for things at an intermediate range or a near range, such as computer or reading. However, now we have lenses that can actually give patients a range of vision, meaning not only can they get the distance, but they can also get that intermediate and near. In addition, we have lenses that correct 
this condition that I mentioned earlier called astigmatism. And astigmatism is really based on the shape of a person's cornea. Some people have a shape that's a little more curved in one aspect than another. And that's essentially called astigmatism. And now we have lens implants that can correct that too. So we have a lot of different great options and we want to find the best option for each particular patient because not every option is great for every patient. So it's really important that you talk to your eye care professional and find the right one for you. Well, excellent. Thank you again, Dr. Lowe, for letting us know the different options there. So now that we know the different options for intraocular lenses, um, what are interlocking lenses made of? Yes, so they can be made out of acrylic or silicone. And traditionally, or more commonly, the lenses are made out of acrylic, but either one is, is good. And as you both, as you know, um, both options are basically a form of plastic. And what's important to know about the material is that it's inert. Inert meaning it's not going to cause an inflammatory reaction in the eye or an allergy. I get that question a lot. So they, they found the reason why intraocular lenses were able to be developed was because scientists realized that using acrylic or silicone was a, a, a material that was non-reactive to the eye. And, and these, another thing to mention too about intraocular lenses that I get asked a lot from patients, they always ask, will they last forever or do I need to replace them? And what's good to know is that this material lasts a lifetime. Ironically, it probably lasts longer than we do. Oh, well, perfect. Again, thank you for that information, Dr. Lowe. And so how do you, uh, how does one get fitted for intraocular lenses? So what we're doing when we see a patient for cataract surgery or lens-based surgery is we're performing multiple tests that we often refer to as scans. So non-radiation-based, these scans are using light waves to measure the eye. Uh, the measure the eye length and also the curvature of the eye. These two components are very critical at de determining the strength needed. So it's different than going to your optometrist uh, or other eye care provider and getting fitted for glasses. I get this patient this question a lot. Patients say, well, well how do you know what prescription to put in? Um, you didn't measure my glasses. Actually, it has nothing to do with your glasses prescriptions in some respect. We don't even need to know your glasses prescription because our tests have to measure the eye, again, the length and the shape of it. And then there's luckily wonderful formulas invented by very, very smart doctors and scientists that actually use these algorithms to determine the specific power of implant needed for a specific, per specific person's uh, shape and length of their eye. So again, ironically, we don't even need to know the person's eyeglass prescription. It's actually somewhat unrelated. Uh, but again, when you're going to your eye doctor, you may notice that you're getting test after test after test. And again, all these tests are actually there for a reason. And they're very sophisticated and our formulas, uh, diagnostic devices and, and, and techniques have gotten very, very advanced. Awesome. Well, again, thank you for that information, Dr. Lowe. And earlier in the conversation, you talked about how uh, these can last for a very long time. Uh, will they ever need to be replaced over time? Yes. So that's a great question too, but typically no. Very rarely are they replaced. There can be some ocular conditions where a person may not have a very strong support structure and the lens implant could move or become dislocated, but typically that's very rare. In most patients, these implants are going to last a lifetime. And in fact, we don't really recommend just going back and changing them out. Once you get one, that's typically the one we wanna keep. And again, it should, they, they last a lifetime. Also, one thing I meant to mention um, is that these implants are not metallic. So there's no worry about getting in an MRI you know, machine or anything like that. You're not setting off a metal detector. This isn't like other hardware that may be put in joints or other parts of your body. So again, it's a non-reactive material and it's non-metallic. And it lasts, as I've heard someone say, the implants will last longer than us, unfortunately. <laughs> well, I, I like that, Dr. Lowe. Thank you so much for that information. And um, Dr. Lowe, do you actually have like a pre-op or and a post-op like regimen for your patients who are, are getting intraocular lenses? So yes. So what I was mentioning earlier about the scans being so critical and determining the strength of implant to put in, one of the biggest advancements in our field in determining the implants has been the recognition that ocular surface dryness or dry eye 
affects our measurements. That was like a light bulb going off about 10 to 15 years ago. And when we realized that, we realized that we have to prep patients more ahead of time before getting their scans. So oftentimes if I've met a patient for the first time and they've come in for a cataract evaluation, if I notice that the scans are not perfect and I suspect dry eye, I will treat them. And a common regimen for that is treating blepharitis, which is very, very common as you know. And I like to use different hygiene products, lid scrubs. There's Akisoft lid wipes. There's also many other products. Hypochlorous acid spray is wonderful. I also like to use um, the, the kind of a daily routine, what we call warm compresses. And that's placing a warm towel, or I prefer an eye mask that you can actually heat up typically in the microwave, placing it on the lids. And that's helpful because again, we want to have the oil glands functioning better. So we want the lids cleaner. We want the oil glands functioning better. And then often I'll prescribe an artificial tear to help re-wet the eye. I will also often prescribe a topical steroid potentially, or even a topical, uh, one of our topical uh, dry eye medications, like a, such as cyclospor and alerfitograss in order to really tune up the ocular surface. But I highly recommend to all my patients before surgery to start this routine, clean their lids, warm their meibomian glands, treat their ocular surface. And I let them know ahead of time, we're going to keep doing this after your surgery. Cause I do like to warn patients. Now I've learned it's better just to warn them and say, look, you're probably going to feel drier after surgery. We're going to start this regimen now. So you get used to it. We're also getting your eye ready and we're going to continue this for, for several months after surgery. I like to set that expectation because oftentimes we, surgeons, we can be puzzled uh, someone after surgery appears to have worse than dry eye. So I think it's better to set the expectation, get them started on a treatment plan. We're helping the patients, of course, and then we're help preoperatively. And then we're also helping them post-operatively in their recovery. Uh, so I, it, it's definitely critical, I think, to the success of the surgery now. Oh, well, excellent. Again, thank you for that, Dr. Lowe. We appreciate that. And Dr. Lowe, are, are there any new technologies or developments that are on the horizon in, in, in intraocular lenses speaking that we should be on the lookout for? Well, we are lucky in today's day and age, there are new implants coming out all the time. The new generation multifocal implants have been getting better and better, giving patients better range of vision with less side effects although we're still not perfect yet, but they have, I've definitely, even in my career as an ophthalmologist, I've seen such a great change. And I think um, the more extended depth of focus lenses are also coming out. And those are very interesting as well because they are reported uh, to have hopefully less side effects of the halos and glare that we worry about with multifocal lenses. The light adjustable lens is a monofocal lens, but what's wonderful about it is even though we're doing all the measurements ahead of time to best calculate the correct power of lens to put in the patient, the light adjustable lens lets us adjust the prescription and the power after. So for the first time ever, we have the capability to customize or fine tune the patient's vision and prescription after the surgery. And that's something we really didn't have options for before. So I think in terms of technology and, and cool science. This one is definitely amazing. Well, excellent. We'll definitely be on the lookout for that in the future, Dr. Lowe. And Dr. Lowe, before we uh, leave today, was there anything else that you would like to let our audience know about? Well, um, I think that, that we live in an exciting time for eye care and eye surgery. We, we really couldn't be luckier. There's so many options now to help improve people's visions and their lives. And it's, it's, I just feel very honored to be part of this field. And I think the technology is one of the most exciting parts of my career. Well, excellent. Uh, thank you for everything, Dr. Lowe. And everyone, that was Dr. Jennifer Lowe from Lowe Ophthalmology in Miami, Florida. Dr. Lowe, uh, thank you again for joining us today. Thank you for having me.